We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory The earth is filled with His glory It's rising up all around It's the anthem of the Lord's renown And it's rising up all around It's the anthem of the Lord's renown Together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory The earth is filled with His glory The earth is filled with His glory Amen. Amen. Indeed, the earth is filled with the glory of our God. We thank you again for joining us for this weekly Bible study. Again, these Bible studies will be available as long as we need to via live stream. They'll be available starting the Monday of each week. Uh, I encourage you to visit them at any time throughout the week. Perhaps you'll want to revisit them uh, from time to time. This evening, we will continue... uh, Our series from the book of Psalms, we're going to be looking at Psalm 19 under the title of Who Will Tell? Let's open up with a brief prayer. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your scripture, for the gift of these psalms, for the opportunity of reading, of hearing, of listening, of learning. We pray, Lord, from this study, we would glean what you would have us to glean, that we might be faithful and fruitful for your kingdom. It's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Turn in your Bible with me to Psalm 19. Again, I've titled this study of Psalm 19, Who Will Who Will Tell? Start off with a story. Daniel Austin. Daniel Austin writes, he was raised in the Midwest, he was raised in Missouri. Uh, His grandparents died, and he helped his parents go and clean out the house. And they were up in the attic, cleaning out the attic. And Austin says he came across this old notebook. The pages were yellowed and, and fragile. It was an ancient, dusty book in the back in a box in the attic. And he said he couldn't help. He started looking through these pages. He tried to turn them carefully. And in those pages was recounted actually the story of his grandparents' grandparents. Very old story. And it seems that they had actually come from Virginia, and in the sort of the westward movement, they had made their way to the west, they had acquired land there in Missouri, they had scratched out a living with that farmland, There were notes here and there of the hardships and struggles, noting some of the big storms and some of the hard winters and harsh times that they had. And he said, I was fascinated by this. Eventually, his ancestors actually, as a town grew up there around them, they actually started a general merchandise store and became store owners and and rather prominent in the area. But Daniel Austin says, "I, I went to my parents and I said, did you know this story? And they they looked at him and said, well, we kind of recall a little bit of it. And Austin says, I said to them, who quit telling this story? Who quit telling it? It's wonderful to think that my ancestors scratched out a living here in this land that I sort of take for granted and the hardships and the struggles that they must have faced. But that was his question. Who quit telling this story? Why, Why hadn't he heard of it? He couldn't believe it. 
I think that's a good question for us today. Who will tell the story? Who will tell the story of God's glory? And the psalmist, Psalm 19, reminds us of those that are participants in the telling of this story. So first, and I'll work my way again each week through the verses as we go. He says, all creation tells the story of God's glory. All of creation participates in telling the story of God's glory. Look at verses 1 through 6 with me. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day to day they utter speech, and night into night they show knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all of the earth, and their words to the end of the earth. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit to the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. He has this wonderful picture of all of God's creation. And it says that creation tells, declares of God's glory. So every day, every day that we're a part of this wondrous world, that wondrous world is actually speaking, if we can hear with the heart, that creation of God is speaking to us, declaring to us, telling us of God's glory. Every day is a story of his glory. On my first circuit, I had an elderly gentleman, and his favorite words, when you greeted him, he would say, glory, glory. When I was preaching, if he wanted to cheer me on, he would say, glory, glory. Glory was his favorite word. And after I'd been there a while, I remember one Sunday, he comes into church and I, I shook his hand and he didn't say anything. And I said, have you got anything to say this morning? And he looked out and he said, look out there, preacher. Well, this was a little country church that overlooked absolutely glorious countryside. And I said, glory? He said, glory, glory. Absolutely. Just look around, preacher. It's everywhere. And that's exactly what this psalm of praise is reminding us. All of creation tells the story of God's glory. And if you can put that point back up again, or it may still be on the screen, but you'll notice I have there, it reveals and repeats. So the rhythm of all of the participants in God's glory is that they reveal God's glory but then they repeat the story of that glory every day. And that's the way it is with creation. We can look out at creation and we say, it is the revelation, it is the revelation of the glory of God. But every single day, that revelation is repeated to us, just like that elderly gentleman in my church. Glory, glory, glory. That's the rhythm of participating in telling about God's glory, is that it, it is revealed his, his glory is revealed, and then we repeat it. Creation repeats it. All of creation tells the story of God's glory as it reveals and repeats. Secondly, the psalmist says that the word of the Lord tells the story of God's promises. And again, the rhythm is to reveal God's promises and then to repeat God's promises. That's the way the word of the Lord is. Look at with me at verses 7 through 10 of Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, much more than fine gold, sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. He's talking about the word of the Lord. He uses various synonyms for the word of the Lord throughout those verses. For example, there in verse 7, the law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord. Verse 8, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord. Verse 9, the judgments of the Lord. All of those are synonyms for God's word. And what the psalmist is reminding us and reminding the worshipers of that day is that that word tells the story of God's promises to us. 
you will find the promises of God revealed in his word, first of all revealed in the word, the living word, Jesus Christ, and then revealed in the word that we find and discover in the Holy Scriptures. The word of the Lord tells the story of God's promises. So the word reveals that to us. Through Jesus Christ and through the Scripture, God reveals his promises. But then those promises are repeated over and over again. The word of the Lord. Throughout the study, both last week and this week and moving forward, speaking of the word of the Lord, I'll be using and reading from this Bible. You'll notice I've had to kind of duct tape it to put it back together again. This Bible was a gift from my father to my mother on Christmas, December 25th of 1960. It was this Bible that my mom used to read a chapter a night to my brother and I before we went to bed. We decided that we would read the Bible all the way through. And it was this very Bible that she used to to guide us through the scriptures herself from the beginning to the end. Oh, it took us uh, several years, actually a few years, and the dates are here in the Bible for me to look at. Every day I heard the story. Now, as a youngster, was I bored by a lot of those chapters? Absolutely bored. As a youngster, was I distracted? When she was reading, I'm sure I was distracted. Was I disinterested? Did I have other things on my mind? I'm sure many times as she read a chapter a night to us before we went to bed, I'm sure as a youngster that was the case. But you know what? Let me tell you how the word of the Lord is. The word of the Lord gets through anyway. (laughs) Why? Because the word of the Lord is telling the story of God's great promises. And so the word of the Lord is is capable of penetrating through my boredom, permeating through my disinterest, moving through the walls of my distractedness. The word of the Lord's like that. And so I want you to know in your own life and in the lives of your family, continue to search the scriptures and place your confidence in the word of the Lord. Even if it's not a chapter a night, if it's a verse a night, my friends. Read a Bible verse as a family before you retire for the evening. Oh, the the young people from time to time, will they be bored? Will you be bored sometimes? Will you be distracted? Will you think, boy, I just don't have time for... Yes, but listen, if we devote ourselves to the word of the Lord in that way, he will move through that anyway. He'll move through and something... I mean, it worked for me as distracted and rebellious at times as I was. All of a sudden, some of those words got through. Why? Because that's the nature of the word of the Lord. It not only reveals God's promises, but it just keeps repeating those promises so that finally I'm surrounded by it in such a way that it actually begins to take root in my heart and it will take root in your heart. The word of the Lord tells the story of God's promises, revealing them and then repeating them to us so that those promises can give us comfort and strength in all and through all the situations and circumstances of life. Finally, the psalmist says, the servants of the Lord, the servants of the Lord are to stay true to telling the story of God's glory. The servants of the Lord, that's you and I. We are to stay true to telling the story of God's glory. Same rhythm, We are to reveal that glory. That is, I want to try to glorify God and reveal God's glory by the way that I live in my words, my attitudes, and actions. But then I want to allow that to repeat itself, repeating it over and over again. Some of the hymns of the church and choruses of the church that we sing, sometimes people might say, don't you ever get tired of singing them? Well, at a human level, I probably do. But when I allow myself to look inward and then to look upward, I never tire. I never tire of that. Friends, because we as servants of God are called to repeat it over and over again, this wonderful story of God's glory. My grandmother revealed the glory of God as a servant and repeated it. She passed it along. Look at verses 11 through 14 with me as we come to this last point. The servants of the Lord 
are to stay true to telling the story. Moreover, by them is thy servant cautioned. And in the keeping of them, there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me, O God, from my secret faults. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Because that's what presumptuous sin will do. It ultimately will take control. Then I shall be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions. And then he closes with this verse, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist is reminding us that as the servants of God, we are to stay connected to him, focused upon him, so these presumptuous sins of hatred and judgment and prejudice and greed won't overtake us. We stay focused upon him and then the meditations of our hearts, the words of our mouths, they actually begin to be acceptable to God because they are revealing his glory to those around us. As I said, my grandma passed it down to my mom. My mom passed it down for, to me. I can remember being seated in a prayer meeting, very small prayer meeting. A layperson was leading this little Wednesday night Bible study. And that layperson said this, when I became a Christian, I believe that I became the person that God intended for me to become. I believe that I am now the person that God intended for me to be by becoming a Christian. That spoke to a little 11-year-old boy who was seated in that little prayer meeting. Again, distracted, bored, probably at 11 years old, but all of a sudden, it got my attention. And I turned to the lady who was seated near me, and I said, I'm too little to really accept Jesus as my Savior. And the lady said to me, you're never too old, you're never too young, Jesus Christ is for everyone. The lady seated next to me was my mother. And as we closed with, I have decided to follow Jesus, I told everyone there, and they had a prayer with me, and I decided to follow Jesus. I tell you that story only because there was a servant of the Lord who repeated the story and revealed God's glory to me. That layperson and my mother allowed the meditations of their hearts and the words of their mouth to be acceptable in God's sight. And when we do that, wonderful, wonderful things happen. So much so that there's a, a whole string of that being repeated. You can testify to that in your own life, can't you? Who are the people? Oh, my Sunday school teachers. Ivor Lou King, my kindergarten Sunday school teacher. Mrs. Backus, Aunt Jenny, Judy Long, Albert Heights, right on up through my youth years. I still remember them. Why? Because they impacted my life. The meditations of their hearts and the words of their mouth, they revealed and repeated the glory of God. Preachers that I recall, was I bored? Was I distracted? Did I not pay attention? Yes. But looking back, those servants continued to tell that story. Preacher Ross and Reverend Rhodes and Preacher Pete. And they impacted my life. And friends, we are called to tell that. You, as a servant of God, must never stop living and telling the story. In your own family, in your friendship groups, may it never be said that we quit telling the story. The psalmist reminds us and answers the question, who will tell? Who will tell the story of God's holiness and glory? Who will tell? Creation tells the story. The Word of God, the Word of the Lord tells the story. And we as servants of God are to continue to tell the story, revealing His glory and repeating it to others. I pray that you will be strengthened and encouraged by these words today. Will you bow with me in prayer? Oh Lord, it is a prayer for all of us in our living through our words, our attitudes, our actions, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.
we stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. Amen. Amen. I may have thrown our live stream guys that are recording this a little bit of a, a loop there, but as Jim started to sing and as I had worked my way through Psalm 19, and the song that he shared says, everyone sing. Everyone sing. That's right. Well, I wasn't going to be silent. Everyone sing. The earth is filled with his glory. We hope that you'll continue to join us for our weekly Bible studies. Again, it will be available each and every Monday. We remind you that our Sunday worship services are available on live stream during these different and difficult times each Sunday morning at 1045. Know that we are praying for you, knowing that, know that we are still connected to you, and know that the comfort and strength of our Lord, we tell the story together, friends, in your homes, in your friendship circles, remind one another of the story, because it's ultimately the story of God's glory in Jesus Christ that will see us through all things. May God bless you today.